guys, welcome back to another video. This is part two of the Flying Gecko Care Guide. Obviously, it's not going to be as long because there's not as much stuff I need to say. But, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So, first thing I didn't mention in the first video is lighting, okay? So, I'm going to put what that light is right here, hopefully, or here, somewhere on the screen. And you're going to need a light, night light too. 75 volt is what I have. Um, I don't know if you can see that right up there. But, yeah, those are going to be your lights. And as you can see, my setup is pretty simple. I didn't add too much. I didn't go all out. I have two large pieces of cork bark, one coconut, plants everywhere. I have two food dishes. That's actually a water dish. I know they don't need a water dish, but I put it there just in case he might need it. And that's his food dish. And he's gone from doobie roaches to mealworms, and he's been eating them. The minute I put it in there, he comes straight down. Live plants do work, bioactive cage, you can't do that if you need to. I didn't do a bioactive, I just went for a normal setup, like I have a coconut bedding with some spag moss at the bottom, and that's kind of the setup I have for that part. The basking spot, which my basking spot is right there on the right side of the tank, you want that to be around 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and you're going to want the cool end of the tank to be uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what it is for Celsius, but honestly, it's kind of easy to translate, so yeah. I think their lifespan, if you get a captive bred, like mine, Re Ringo is a captive bred. Um, the lifespan can be up to five to eight years, and if you get wild caught, it's, and it's five to eight years also in wild caught. Back to their diet. I thought about this one time, but you I feel like you can feed them rapashi food diet, but you gotta get the insect diet. I'm not so sure about that, but if you want to try it, you can. I didn't see anything on the internet about it or Google or anything, so honestly, yeah. You can feed them. I, I haven't tried it. I just feed them mealworms and doobie roaches, and that's kind of his main diet, so yeah. And flying geckos are capable of dropping their tails, so be careful when you're like doing stuff in the cage. When they drop their tails, they don't grow it completely back. I'll put a picture right here of what it looks like when they drop their tail. So yeah, basically, they drop their tail. They look like a like a satanic leaf gecko or something. And like any other reptile, obviously they shed. So that's that's not new. So I actually have for when he wants to shed. It's not really sprayed up right now, but. I filled the coconut with spag moss so when he goes in, it's like really humid in there and it'll help him get off that shed easier. So you guys can do that too. I know you can do it with like gargoyle geckos too. You know basically any arboreal gecko or... Yeah, that's one way to help them shed because it keeps the humidity high and it's easier to shed with high humidity. Other than that, that's pretty much all for today. I'm gonna just spray his tank real quick. That's pretty much all I really have for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, let me know if you guys want another care video because I have a ton of reptiles here. If you guys just want to know anything about any of them. Um, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and see you in the next one. Peace out.